I think over the last decade or so, a lot of young people have really been drawn to this idea of becoming entrepreneurs. And I think it's great. I mean, I think I think there's really three vehicles of leadership that you can embark your life on. And I want to just kind of kind of go over those three. And I want to focus on entrepreneurship. And I want to I want to take I want to take people into my life a little bit and explain to them how it has worked for me or how it hasn't worked for me and how it may work for them or it may not work for them. And I think by the end of the show, I'm going to give you a much more um, clear, clearer runway, a clear path to becoming an entrepreneur rather than just jumping into an entrepreneurship. I know a lot of colleges have entrepreneurship courses now and a lot of a lot of people are just trying to just start these dot coms and do these stay at home from work things and creating these businesses out of nothing. I, and I'd never want to squash that. I just want to make sure that everybody knows that it isn't just it's not that sexy. I mean, it really isn't um that certainly that easy or what we would call that sexy. It's a lot of work. And I've got some statistics here uh, that I'm going to read you a little bit. I'm not going to try to talk you out of uh, things, but I want to talk to you about the three. Let's just go over the three types of leadership. So we know that entrepreneurship really isn't that sexy. But last week we went over that. Actually, there's really only three types of leadership that that really can lift you into a platform of leadership. And I've realized these three leadership moments, um, literally all three of these leadership moments I've experienced in my life. And I think that's really what we're going to focus in on the end of this show here. We're trying to do it in 20 minutes or left. But the three types of ships of leadership, right? Like that play on word. The three types of ships in leadership is entrepreneurship, business ship, and employee ship. Okay. We've got entrepreneurship, business ship, made up word. And employeeship, another made up word. That's just because we do it. So so here we go. Entrepreneurship. We know what that is, right? Entrepreneurship is a leader or person who organizes and manages any enterprise, especially a business, usually with considerable initiative and risk. OK, that's entrepreneurship. That's right out of the dictionary. That is that is right out of uh, Wikipedia. It's right out of pretty, pretty damn close to the exact words. I've added um, risk zero to one. So Peter Thiel wrote a book called Zero to One. So I just want to overlay this with you. Peter Thiel is a super, super impressive entrepreneur. He did a lot of things, but one of his biggest uh, forefront entry level things that he ever did was PayPal. Him and Elon Musk, believe it or not, created PayPal together. And uh, they subsequently sold PayPal. But PayPal was uh, Peter Thiel's big push into this entrepreneur world. He's done a lot of investment things prior and some other things that weren't quite as sexy, right, until PayPal. Well, anyways, he wrote a book called Zero to One. And I think it's very important that everyone understands Peter Thiel's concept because I, I prescribe to it. And whether you know you're prescribing to it or not, but zero to one. So if you're going to build a company, let's just say like Apple. So zero to one is the entrepreneurship side of Apple and the iPhone. It wasn't out there. Nobody had ever seen it before. No one really thought about some of the things. There were cell phones and maybe some certain things. But when 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 uh, Steve Jobs created Apple in the iPhone, he really was this entrepreneurial mindset. Right. A brilliant, brilliant man. And he took the whole iPhone concept from zero to one from nothing to something, from nothing to something. Peter Thiel writes about this in the book Zero to One. So guys like Elon Musk, entrepreneurs, guys like Peter Thiel, guys like Steve Jobs, they are taking their entrepreneurial level from zero to one. Quite frankly, it's the hardest part of any type of business proposition is to create something and make it work and get it to a working process. That's what an entrepreneur does. An entrepreneur cares more about the concept, cares more about um, that the product works, cares more about this idea of creating something new, something that's uh, created, something that's made something else better, 
they kind of worry about the money later. They obviously know that there's a there's a e-commerce component of it down the road, but they they really want to take those things on now and they want to make it work. All right. That's the entrepreneurship. And it takes a lot of a lot of here's what it says. Business usually with considerable initiative and risk. So that's zero to one. Business ship, we talked about last week, is business ship is this leader or person who occupation or profession or trade engaged in commerce or profit-seeking enterprises or concern usually with considerable management or mitigated risk. So a business person is like after Steve Jobs, Tim Cook comes in and he's the operational guy and he is the guy that literally figured out how to make all these iPhones. Cook was zero to one. I'm sorry. Steve Jobs was zero to one. But Steve Jobs just didn't have the appetite or the ability to maybe sit in the chair and figure out how to make all these phones and get them all over the world. Right. He he just he was on to the next project. He was on to the iPad and he was on to Apple TV and all these things were going on in his mind. Right. So the business ship side of Apple is a beautiful, large one of the most successful companies the planet has ever seen, took an entrepreneurial ship mind like Steve Jobs, and then it took a business ship mind like Tim Cook. He figured out how to make it work. It was already up and working, but he made, figured out how to make so many of them and actually make it become an operational business that made money, right? So the business ship person is a leader, a person who occupation, profession or trade engaged in commerce, a profit seeking enterprise or concern, usually with considerable managed or mitigated risk. So a lot of the risk uh, is already left the playing field because zero to one has happened in the entrepreneurship side. Now the one to 100 has to happen which is after zero to one, one to 100 is the operational side. But the one that we don't talk about the most is actually the third option of leadership. And I think this is the one I really want people to focus on if they're listening to the show and they're younger. I, I get worried about younger people. I still feel young, right? But I'm not, I'm 55 years old. And um, I, I get concerned about younger people thinking that this entrepreneurial side and this business side is so sexy that they go right from college right into this idea of creating uh, this entrepreneurial type of mindset. In your in your most successful beginning earning years are basically 23 to basically 40. You got roughly 20, 20 years there where you've got to really hone in what your skill and your craft is going to be. Right. And if you if you don't do that, you're left at the age of 40 or something like that down the road with maybe trying to find something new again and recreating yourself over and over and over again. And if you haven't laid the proper groundwork or the foundation for something to build on in your earlier years, you might get left behind. I know I I did. I know I would have. Um, I, I, I couldn't keep up with these kids um, in the Internet. And in, in even even uh, when it came to software, we, we didn't have computers, barely computers, computers just came out when we graduated from college. And so basically after we graduated from college, all of a sudden these computers were everywhere and we had no experience with them. So I was able to push through my leadership components and my leadership world, my entrepreneurial side. But I want to talk about that. But let's really let's really talk about employment ship because this is the most important leadership skill set I think you really need to need. I don't want you to leapfrog over employee ship. No such word, but here's my definition. A leader person who works for another person or business, a firm for pay. You get paid usually with considerable steady benefits and pay a little little worry, very little worry of any financial or personal risk. So I want you to understand that here, I was reading this, this article and uh, this, this idea came to me through this entrepreneurship when, when it was this, this idea of making entrepreneurs sexy, when in fact, why would you become an entrepreneur? Why would you help build, help build an already established company versus losing sleep over thinking of all the entrepreneurial risks you could take. So if you elected the employee ship side of things, you could actually help build an already established company versus losing sleep over thinking of all the entrepreneurial risks you took. 
right? How many nights of sleep have I lost? How many, how many times have I been through these things where uh, I've just worried myself sick and, and just couldn't almost uh, threw up over the risks I've taken over time and time and time? How, why would you, why wouldn't, why not earn a hefty salary versus worry on earth, worry how on earth you'll be able to take care of your family for the rest of your life? constantly working through my brains, constantly always there. How am I going to take care of my family the rest of my life? What if this doesn't hit? What if this doesn't hit? You know, um, have the chance to one day move up in the ranks if you're an employee and in your study and you're working towards employment ship, right? Have a chance to one day move up in the ranks versus embrace a completely uncertain future. Entrepreneurships don't have a guaranteed future. We, we don't have benefits. We don't have um, guaranteed income. We don't have a guaranteed economic climate. We don't have a guaranteed um, salary base. There's, I mean, when you're an entrepreneur, there's nobody. The banks aren't even your friends. I mean, they're constantly look giving you a colonoscopy. Constantly, they're they're up your rear all the time, wondering because they're betting against you, right? There's. There's literally nobody rooting for you when you're an entrepreneur. Literally, the banks are rooting for you, but they're looking for reasons to be careful not to lose their money on you if they give you any money because it's a risk. Um, you've got competitors rooting against you because they're trying to do something another way or they're, you know, jealous or doing things a different way. They don't they're not constantly say, yeah, go get them, Todd, you know, build that payroll company. Yeah, you're awesome. No, no, I, I don't. I've never really felt it uh, in the in the entrepreneurial competitive world of side. I've got friends that on the surface say they're cheering for me, but I know that, you know, people keep score and they do things. It's OK. It's OK. But that's part of the entrepreneurship side of things. Why not enjoy paid time off and other benefits? Right. Why not just be an employee and be a leader in employmentship? Right. And enjoy paid time off and other benefits versus yourself out in a culture that celebrates the 80 hour hustle. The 80 hour hustle is, you know, the 80 hour hustle. This is what I was looking at these quotes here. 80 hour hustle is if you're lucky, you work 80 hours a week um, in the entrepreneurship side. If you're lucky and your average, the average salary of an entrepreneur is like $5 an hour, right? If you don't hit it big. So am I, am I against entrepreneurs? No, I'm not against entrepreneurs. I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that people, a lot of younger college kids and people I speak to at colleges, you know, we get, I want you to know that there's three ways to look at things, right? And the last thing I wanted to talk to you about real quick before I just kind of give you an answer to all this is I want you to understand in this entrepreneurial role that, that there's this thing called focus illusion, focus illusion, Focus illusion, cognitive. And so here's what it is. Cognitive bias where people place too much emphasis on future, a future event or events. And as a result, inaccurately predict the reality of the event or feelings of such occurrence. So what comes, this is a scientific term. This is a psychology term that goes along with this whole entrepreneurial role and idea of things. And it's called focus illusion. Meaning that entrepreneurs like myself and people that get hooked up into entrepreneurship early on versus immediate businessmanship, like a franchise or buying a going concern and making it better, or just becoming a leader and becoming a strong employee and getting benefits and a 401k and maybe be able to buy a new company down the road. This entrepreneurial piece of you has what's called a focus illusion that causes this, this depression or this negative side of you because you have a cognitive bias, right? What is cognitive? Well, cognitive is this. Cognitive is the concern with the act or process of knowing and perceiving, right? Relating to the mental process or perception, memory, judgment, and reasoning. So cognitive is this ability for you to think and process about perceptions or your memory or your judgment. Makes sense? That's cognitive. So we go back up here to this focus illusion that comes along with entrepreneurship. So I appreciate everybody following me on this. It's fun to see the, the, the numbers of people ticking up. And I just want to make a note that you, I don't see comments on this um, stream yard that I'm on because I want to focus on the show. I want to focus on you. And I want you to learn something from this. So focus illusion is, is something that happens to these, 
this um, sicko entrepreneurs like myself that it's never enough. I, mean, I don't know how to put it any differently. It's just never enough. We get so hooked on the emphasis of a future event that it's inaccurately predicted and the reality of the event or feelings of such occurrence. So I can remember when, I mean, I can remember um, three years ago and I made a, uh, my, I had a, I had a $5 million check. I sold a company. I made $5 million. And um, I mean, it was exciting. It was the biggest one-time check I'd ever gotten in my life. And it was probably a little more than 5 million. But the point of the matter is I got that. I was waiting and I was waiting and I had this focus illusion, right? I had this illusion because I'd been working like 15 years on this one process, right? 15 years. I don't know if you take the hours and divide it by what, what you're going to have, how much it cost me. But when I finally sold the final product, it was roughly 5 million and some change. And I remember getting that check really and seeing, you didn't, I didn't get the check. It went into my one of my bank accounts. And I remember getting on the, the porch of my uh, master suite here over uh, the ocean at Anna Marie Island, right? I don't know if anybody had been out there, but it's just beautiful, Anna Marie Island. It's just an amazing, amazing place. It looks a lot like my background, actually. Could be Anna Marie Island. But so I remember I got that check, right? in my account and I got a, 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 I love iced tea. That's what I'm drinking here, wired differently iced tea. And I sat on the balcony, I was home alone. And I remember thinking, if I could just ever sell that company, I could ever realize that five million, I could ever do that. And I remember sitting down, grabbing my iced tea, looking back, drinking, looking over the ocean, Looking at my app again, put the phone down, took another drink, <laughs> looked at the app again. I looked at all the money in my account, put it down. And uh, I literally, I, I, it was anticlimactic. I mean, I couldn't touch it. I mean, it wasn't ever really, a, it wasn't a check. Um, I got antsy sitting there and then I had this, like this panic kind of roll under me, like, now what? I couldn't sit there even 10 minutes, you know, because I had fallen under what we call focus illusion. It was my cognitive bias of a future event of $5 million and my inability to have a reality of a feeling. So I thought the feeling would be one way and it was so less of a feeling than what I expected, it left me flat. It left me kind of almost dry and almost queasy. After 10 minutes, I had to get up and I thought, okay, now what's next? Now I gotta do something with this money. And so this is this idea of focused illusion that follows along with this entrepreneurial road. So I just wanted to talk about those three leadership styles of people, which is entrepreneurship, businessship, and, and uh, employmentship. All right. And so I really wanted to just kind of quickly tell you um, how I have done it. Okay. And so I took the time to write this banner here. Let me find it. I always have trouble with these banners because I think I have them. And um, then they kind of disappear. I don't know what happens to, here it is. How about this one? Donuts, tacos, and football made me who I am. And so let's talk about how Todd Saylor moved through these three types of leadership models. I'm not saying I'm the best in the world by any trash. I'm saying I'm the best. I'm, I'm saying I'm the best in the world at my craft. And I work hard to become that at each and every craft I adapt. And I think you are doing the same. But I wanted to just kind of let you know that it's not just becoming an entrepreneur. It's not just becoming a business ship person or it's not just becoming an employment ship person. I think you need to understand that for somebody like me, that I didn't wake up, roll out of bed and become an entrepreneur. I think you all need to know, especially if you're younger people. And even middle-aged people in your, in your 30s and 40s, I think that you need to understand there's still time 
But I think that you need to be great at one thing first. Right? I want you to be great at one thing first. Because once you're great at one thing, then you can then you can mushroom off. You can you can do other things. Once you have your your core focus, your entrepreneurial path can come from that. So what was I really good at first? Well, the first thing I was ever really, really good at was making donuts. I was eight years old and my dad owned donut shops and I made donuts. I was really good at donuts. I mean, I remember being very competitive at making donuts. When I was, I started washing dishes at eight. I remember actually helping manage the, the, the Lake James Tom's Donuts uh, when I was probably 13, 14 years old and rolling donuts and riding my bike down there at two in the morning to crank cake donuts and opening up alone. And But I was good. I took a lot of pride in that, but I became very good at that. I was an employee at that time and I became very good at that. And then when I graduated from college, um, where I became very, very good at football and I was rewarded. And most of the times I was very good. Sometimes I I, I had some moments. I'm sure some people can remember those. And I'm sure some people can remember the good moments. I can remember the good moments. I remember getting awards like an All-American and All-Conference and, and District Player of the Week and all those kind of things. Those are fun. But, boy, I will tell you about football. The best thing about football was the huddle, the friends I made, the players, all these guys that I still keep in touch with today. Amazing. But so I was really good at dance. I became really good at football. And then when I graduated from college, I really became good at tacos. Taco Bell hired me, right? Taco Bell hired me right out of college and I became a manager there and I learned how to become a good, a great employee manager and how to run a Taco Bell store. And then from there, so think about it. I went from becoming a good employment ship and then when I went to uh, employee from, from donuts, I was an employee for a coach at, at, in college, I did what he said. I, I learned and listened and became a, a, a good player because I was coachable in many ways. And then when I left college, I went and worked as an employee at Taco Bell, at PepsiCo, and a corporate management fast track. So all of these things were this employment ship piece of leadership that was moving on, moving on. And then after Taco Bell happened, and to, to kind of speed us up, I ended up buying an existing business that was a donut shop, right? Because I did one thing great. I had to go back to what I was great at to start over, to start to lay the groundwork for the future of my entrepreneurship career. Right? You get it? So I went from employment ship. Now I'm in business ship because I'm taking over a donut business, which I already knew how to do. Wasn't I wasn't an entrepreneur by any stretch of the imagination at that time. I was just business ship. I went from employee, employee, ship to business ship. And then later on down the road, I started selling donut products as a salesperson, stayed in that one thing great mode. And then one thing led to another. And I became a salesman for a company called ESI, which was a nationwide payroll company, right? Out of Phoenix, Arizona. I became the nation's number one selling HCM salesperson in the whole country, right? Right. It was a $50 million company. And by the time I left in 10 years, it was a it was a billion dollar company and I represented 300 million of those sales. And so I was very successful in the sales as an employee employment ship. And I worked through all that. And then I launched into creating in 2003 my first entrepreneurship endeavor, which was Pacer Systems. And that's where we are today. Pacer Systems. My first, my baby, my number one entrepreneurship role I had never done. I helped create the pay as you go workers comp model and broke grounds with Berkshire and Hathaway. And regarding that, prior to that, they were called guard and a lot of stuff's boring you. But we really moved through that and we rolled all the dice on creating pay serve systems, creating that business model. But we went from employee ship to business ship to entrepreneurship, all because I could do one thing great, make donuts, make tacos, and play football. Make donuts, make tacos, play football.
It's kind of amazing when you think about it. You know, somebody who just makes donuts, somebody who makes tacos for a living, and a small college football player, moderate, pretty good success, right? Can rise to become an entrepreneurial success in America and make at that last juncture, what we started off this whole show with was a five plus million dollar check. And then suffer from what did we call focus illusion. <laughs> I think I was happiest probably early on when I was just selling and I was in the employment ship role. But the encouraging side of what I wanted to tell you with here is, is that, hey, um, I came from donuts to tacos and football to becoming an entrepreneurial success at the age of 55 and going through all of these struggles and going through all these successes. And luckily, I had a great partner with me, my wife, Tracy, who who's put up with amazing amount of stress, amazing amount of ideas and failures. And, and what we talk about my ego a couple of shows back, <laughs> put it up with my ego and all this, this it and all these kind of things. But thank goodness I had a little empathy and thank God. Her empathy ego balance is the other way. She's got empathy, 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 and low ego. And I've got more, more ego and less empathy. And so we're kind of working our way through all that. But I, I want to encourage all you, and I'm going to end this show because I want to do it at 20 minutes and we're at 30. So here's where we're at. Let's go right back to this right here. I just want you to know entrepreneurs really isn't that sexy. I want you to know that you can do it. I'm there for if you want to do it. But I also want you to understand that I want you to go through the steps in this order to do the very best that you can. I want you to understand that there's three types of leaderships in this entrepreneurship, businessship, and employmentship. And I want you to understand that, 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 that zero to one is getting the company off the ground and inventing and getting to a certain place of opening running. And one to a hundred is this spot where we're taking it from entrepreneurship to businessship. But I also want you to know, before you even get into all that, I want you to know that the most important piece that anybody could do off the groundwork is to go into this employment ship leadership mode, because that's where your groundwork, that's where your training, that's where your work ethic, that's where your sharpening iron, sharpens irons, that's where your cognitive skills come around, that's where things really become you becoming something that you could be rather than something that you're not going to be. You see what I'm trying to say? And I want you to be aware that we all have this focus illusion challenge, right? But it's more inclusive of this uh, entrepreneurship role. So in conclusion, I just want to share the idea and give you the, 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 the actually the secret sauce of how I've done it. And if you're out there and you're looking for a higher grounds and you're looking how to become an entrepreneur and start a new type of company and you're middle aged or you're getting a little getting getting a little older like me, 50 years old, 55 years old, you can still do it. I'm there with you. But I just want you to know that almost all great entrepreneurs start in the employment ship role. Do one thing great. I did donuts, tacos, and football. One thing great. Donuts, tacos, football. Okay, say it with me. Donuts, tacos, football. Donuts, taco, football. Donuts, taco, football. Okay, what's your three things? What's your one thing that you can do great that you can help blossom your entrepreneurial spirit if that's where you want to go and your business ship per spirit if that's where you want to go. Well, I'm going to wrap this up right now. I'm just going to, I want to try this little thing out. So today um, I'm, I, I was with my family and there, everyone has to be quiet because they're here today. We had a great Thanksgiving. And so I just wanted to show you, this is what's going on. Can you see this? This is what's going on in my house right now. That is the Christmas tree we just went out and bought. And that is Kendra and Tracy unpacking the ornaments and we're getting that around. And then here is, this is kind of funny. Now here's Kara, my 21 year old daughter who came home from Stetson. She's got to have surgery. If we saw that little show we did a couple days ago, she is making a uh, stupid face. I don't know what she's doing being funny, but she wants me to stick that wreath right there. Uh, we'll figure that out. But here's the one I really, when I actually got a little closer, I looked around what was going on. And this is what's really going on. 
I see some Kahlua. I see some two types of Bailey and a Godiva uh, chocolate. So anyways, that's that's my house right now. Anyways, hey, can you say with me? Donuts, tacos, football. Do one thing great. I want you to become entrepreneurs. I'm with you. I want you to be wired differently. I want you to know that. But I also want you to know the rules of engagement, right? Employment ship, business ship, then entrepreneurship. Try to stick to those three rules. Try to, try to th stick to those three processes in that order. And I think you're going to have much more success. You're going to enjoy your journey a lot more. And you're going to you're going to have you're going to live a lot longer. So anyways, again, I appreciate everything. It was a great show. And I really appreciate you listening. And I uh, can't wait to uh, see you thrive and become that entrepreneur role side that you want to be. Uh, God bless you guys. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Have a great day.